Welcome to Late Night Riders. On this episode, we talked with Bethany Lee. Bethany quit her job to do what she loves. She became a private trainer, then became an equestrian influencer, and now even has her own podcast. You can follow her on Instagram at myequestrianstyle, or you can listen to her podcast, The Equestrian Podcast. Enjoy! Welcome to Late Night Riders. I'm Gretchen, and I'm joined by my grandma, Debbie, and Bethany. Hi, Bethany. Hello. <laughs> Thanks for having me. So Thanks first of here. all, I want to say we love the haircut. <laughs> we saw it on your Thank Instagram. You. It's very cute. <laughs> um, Thank you. Do you want to tell us a little bit how you like originally got started with horses? How old were you? Um, yeah, so started riding when I was four or five-ish, so I'm 26 now, so I've been riding for a minute. <laughs> yeah, what was the name of your first horse? Uh, my first horse, so I didn't have my first horse until I was maybe nine or ten. Um, I started riding because my older sister um, had been riding, so went in her footsteps, and we got a thoroughbred chestnut mare off the track and her name was Scarlett and as you can imagine she was a handful. Good so, place to start um, right? <laughs> she, yeah yeah she taught me a lot um, but yeah loved her. We had the same color hair so I thought Aww. it was cool. <laughs> so you um, kind of were you showing at the time is that what you did you were showing um, before you got to college or how did that work? Um yeah, uh, very casually, um, which I feel like was kind of normal for our age group, or like I guess our era. Um, I I showed, and I'm I'm from Wisconsin, and so I showed in the kind of Wisconsin, um, Illinois kind of circuit, and so that was primarily the summer months because it gets so cold. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I would show, um, you know. A handful of times a year and uh, when I, I showed Scarlett a bit um, but then uh, she could <laughs> only do so much so at that point in high school um, I did more long-term leases where I would lease you know one horse for like a year or so and whatever they were kind of into or whatever they um, showed in I would show them in so I did quite a bit of equitation and jumpers when I was in high school Mm -hmm. Okay. And mm -hmm. so then you got to college and you took a break and you went to, you yep. were from Ohio. From, right. Yes. So and we you were came like, to oh, Ohio. Senior yeah. Bill. Ohio. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So usually no one knows uh, Cedarville University, but yeah, I went, went to a small private Christian school in Ohio and um, there were, there's like maybe a barn or two, but it was all like an hour, 45 minutes right. away. Cedarville yeah. is out in the middle I didn't of have nowhere. A car. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like straight up just cornfields. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> so I um, decided to take a little break, didn't have a car my freshman year, um, took some time off, and it was bizarre because I was a full-fledged horse girl. Like, I was at the barn 24-7 all the time up until college, and I, for some crazy reason, just had a piece about taking a little bit of a break. I wasn't necessarily burned out, but um, was just kind of content with uh, taking some time to go to college and experience all of that. So yeah, I took a, I, I would I would occasionally, I, when I came home, I rode, um, but it, for the most part, I mean, I took a, a four year break. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like that gave you time to, um, not only your studies and so forth, but you know, when we go further ahead, but do you feel that that gave you the time you needed to maybe just come into everything that you did with the horses, like having that break or, you know, it, you said it was good. I you had a piece so. about it. Yeah. 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 I think that I always thought that horses were going to be a part of my life. Mm -hmm. I think when I was in, when I was in high school, my trainer was like, whatever you do, don't be a horse trainer. And she's like, don't do it. Just go to college, do something else. And I was like, yeah, yeah, sounds good. I really didn't think that I was going to be a trainer and uh, uh -huh. do this whole, you know, equestrian influencing and all of that. But um, so I went to college. I, I 
new. I, I originally started um, as a pre-pharmacy student, mm-hmm. and um, my dad was actually, he my freshman year, he was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, mm-hmm. and um, so... It, it was like a, a pretty gnarly diagnosis from or prognosis when he first was diagnosed and yeah. um, we were all kind of turned off to the medical field and so uh, I, I was just kind of like you know what I'm gonna do something else and I've uh-huh. always loved fashion I always joke that my mom would when I was like five or six she'd find me like sitting in the middle of my closet with like seven layers of outfits on <laughs> So sweet, so, so it's cute. Always been my thing. <laughs> you started when you were little. Um, your own little fashion style, so cute. <laughs> <laughs> so loved it. Always, always was putting on like three layers of outfits at any given time. And my mom was awesome and let me go to the grocery store like that and like <laughs> go <cute>. around. <laughs> it reminds me of Gretchen's sister. Yeah, yeah, my sister's studying fashion, fashion. right so, now. So yeah, so we yeah. have one yeah. of those. Yeah, and so family. she would walk around in my grandma's heels yeah. growing up. <laughs> oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, I yeah we had a huge dress up box and yeah, yeah it was that that was like some of my favorite memories growing up. So uh-huh. after I switched my major, uh, I went to a small school, so they didn't necessarily have a fashion specific major, and so I went into, I got a degree in communications, and um, was I interned in Los Angeles the summer going into my senior year for a jewelry company. Um, Jennifer Meyer Jewelry, and I absolutely loved it. It was such a fun environment. I loved being in LA, Mm -hmm. um, loved kind of the fashion world, and um, they hired me on uh, full-time after graduation. So um, I graduated uh, May 2015. I got married three weeks later, and then my husband and I moved out to California, and I started working out there. So And LA is such a switch from the Midwest or Ohio to LA. It's just so laid back and so different. Yeah, really awesome atmosphere, Mm -hmm. sure. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And he's from my husband Ethan's from Delaware. And so oh, wow. yeah, it was a big change yeah. for both of us. Um, but we loved Good. it. We lived yeah. there. I, I loved it especially. He wasn't too fond of the traffic and the cost of living mm-hmm. and all of that stuff. Right. So we ended up we've been in Florida now for two years. But um I LA I would for sure move back there in the future, but it has a special place in my heart because it, it's kind of the series of events that got me into what I'm doing now. Uh, so you were uh, at that job for about eight months. At what point did you start considering like quitting that job? Like I'm sure that was terrifying trying to figure out what you were going to do next and like where where did you realize mm-hmm. like it's time to move on? Yeah, so um, I loved my boss. I loved Jen. I loved the jewelry. I loved the concept and, um, you know, enjoyed all of that. I, I did, um, to be honest, struggle with the office environment. Um, I think being like a young Midwestern girl mm-hmm. out in LA, i all of my coworkers were either from New York or LA and, um, there is kind of a, a stereotype and, um, not everyone fills it, but they definitely did. And so I just, uh, I felt very alone and very, uh, kind of like an outcast. Um, and all I wanted to do mm-hmm. was do big things in the company, kind of like move up. And I think um, also because I was uh, originally there as an intern, um, when I went to go work full time, I think I was kind of uh, always viewed as a glorified intern. Um, Mm -hmm. And I, uh, you know, had so much I wanted to do and all that stuff. And Mm -hmm. I'm sure a lot of it, you know, some of it on my end um, was just being impatient and not trusting the process of kind of paying my dues and working yeah. up the ladder. I wanted to like make big things happen right when I got there. Okay, so yeah. there was a little bit mm-hmm. of frustration um, there for sure. And um, realizing that uh, I just wasn't happy working a nine to five and wanted to uh, do something that really made me happy right. to go to work mm-hmm. again. So um, ended up quitting and um it was I mean honestly it was a kind of dramatic ending but um Mm -hmm. I ended up kind of like removing myself from the situation it was kind of a Mm -hmm. a toxic uh environment Mm -hmm. um again loved loved the company would totally work for the boss like 
personally mm-hmm. any day. But um, yeah, it just wasn't for me. It wasn't working out, wasn't making me happy or fulfilled. So um, I ended that I was about eight months in working there full time. And um, my husband was really supportive. And he's like, if you're not happy, just quit. And I was like, but I don't have anything else lined up. And uh, he's like, just you're not happy. Well, you'll find something else. Uh, so I went ahead and quit. And from there, I uh, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I was like, maybe I'll nanny until I find something else, or maybe I'll do this or that. Yeah. Just trying to figure out um, where I could go from there. Still, right. still thinking that fashion was what I wanted to do. We were in LA; it was the best place to be. Um, and uh, had a couple conversations with my parents and with Ethan, and um, they were just really supportive and kept bringing me back to what makes you happy. And, you know, always like fashion and stuff like that. But the more I really thought about it, I was like, you know, it'd be really cool to get back into doing something with horses. And mm-hmm. I really honestly hadn't mm-hmm. thought that much about my equestrian background um, up until that point. And so, um, I was like, well, I've taken quite a bit of a break, but it could be really fun to jump back into it again. There were tons of little, uh, the West Coast is so different than the East Coast yes. as far as mm-hmm. uh, barns go. Like there's, uh, mm-hmm. um, there's you know, lots of little private barns in Malibu, kind of where I was living. And then there's a couple like mega big, big equitation barns um, up in the valley. So I hadn't really had any equestrian connections in um, California. And so I honestly just started go- like Google mapping barns in the area and trying to find an email or a phone number and calling them, asking if they needed any help. Um, I was willing to like do stalls or do whatever, but um, ideally I was looking for like an exercise riding position. So um, kept calling, kept calling, getting a lot of dead ends. And um, a lady did return my call um, and I I wish I knew her name, but I don't even know her name. Uh Um, And she had a private barn in Malibu and she said, hey, Thanks for your call. Um, We actually don't need anyone at the time, but um, I do know a guy who has a big barn in Calabasas. He seems to always need riders. I can pass his info along, and um, if he needs any help, I'll have him give you a call. Like, great. Didn't, like, really think anything of it. At that point, I had several no's and um, was starting to look at other things for jobs. So I was just like, okay, sounds good. Well, like, maybe three weeks later, um, Nick Karazisis called me. And um, he said, uh, hey, I got your number from so-and-so, and and, um, I uh, would love to have you come in for an interview. And so um, I went to, uh, so this was Far West Farms in Calabasas, California, and had three or four meetings with him, and um, he graciously somehow hired me even though I mean if anyone has taken a break from riding it's so frustrating Uh, because your mind is it's like riding a bicycle it's it all all comes back but your mind is trying to tell your body what to do and your body just can't do it so um so that he gave me a lot of grace and Uh um I started out as an exercise rider for him and then uh because I was riding, I think, 10 or 11 horses a day, I got right back into it again and was starting to feel strong again. And then um, he slowly had me uh, start um, being one of the head trainers for his riding school. So I taught um, a lot of the up-down lessons and kids that were just getting on a horse before. So that was sure. really fun. I hadn't had a lot of uh-huh. um, training experience, but um, I found out that I loved it. I thought I was like okay, I want to be an exercise rider, I want to be a catch rider, all, all riding, no training. And then I started teaching lessons, these like cute little kids, seeing them go from never, you know, touching a horse before to like jumping little cross rail courses. Uh, and I'm like, this is amazing. Uh, so I knew I wanted that to be part of my um, career path also. What I love up to this point of your life and your story is that you have said, you've expressed that you wanted to do what you like to do. You've expressed that. I think people who are listening need to hear that, that, you know, it's so important to do every day what you like doing. And and just additionally, the passion that people have for horses that we all carry is, um, you know, being equestrians. It's just when it's in you, it's in you, and you know you need to go forward. And it's so good to hear you say even for people who have been out of it 
and you were young to go back into it and it took some just not a lot of time but that you say hey it's you've got to get back yeah everything you remember but just that body back into it again I think everybody can relate to that so well yes yeah it was I mean it was a bit of a hot mess but I'm (laughs) happy that it Uh, it, you know worked its way out and yeah I would encourage anyone who's taken time off that it's it's going to be challenging or or even for young professionals I think there's a lot to be said um and it's you're you're going the only way you're going to get better is if you mess up and start from the bottom that's right things are going to be a little floppy and but it'll be worth it in the long run and Uh now looking back at that I'm like oh my gosh I can't believe that such good words what I did to get to where I am today Uh and now like every day is like I Uh I have so much fun and I love everything like you whether it's an office day working on equestrian style or the equestrian podcast or if I'm teaching lessons or um flying to a horse show to go you know go show with the girls it's Mm -hmm. it's so much fun I'm Mm -hmm. so happy I went through all of that other junk to Mm -hmm. get to where I am now Mm -hmm. so you started then with the children and then mm -hmm. yep okay and then you then um at what point did your blog come like and start to be a part because you have a very successful blog yeah, yeah, thanks. Um, so we uh, we ended up moving to Florida, which is when I started my equestrian style. But mm-hmm. we moved to Florida because um, my husband had a degree in finance, and he was working as a financial advisor. And um, he were very opposite personalities. I'm a lot more extroverted, and he is very introverted and analytical. And uh, the reason he wanted to do financial advising was he, he genuinely wanted to help families with their finances and realized being an advisor was about 90% sales and 10% actually helping and advising. Mm -hmm. And he is not a salesman. It was like eating him apart. Like he could not even think Uh, about going door to door or cold calling or doing anything. He's like, I, that's just not him. Mm -hmm. So, um, he ended up switching a career path to, uh, real estate investing. And so, um, now he flips houses and we own a bunch of rental properties. And so he does that full time, which is amazing. But he also had the struggle before his dream job, but that involved moving to Florida because, uh, with cost of living and, um, cost of houses, Mm -hmm. it made way more sense to start out in Florida than in California. Mm -hmm. So, um, we have been in Florida, we're in Jacksonville, Florida, so Northern Florida for about two years. And, um, when I first moved out here, um, I, again, didn't really have any any equestrian connections besides a couple from my previous boss in California. And um, so reached out to a few barns and started uh, working for a family, Um, not the family I work for now, but I just um, helped, they just bought a facility and I helped get them started with the facility. And um, at the time I was doing that and riding and in riding clothes every day. And um, when I, I'll back up a second. When we were living in LA um, to make extra money, Ethan and I were also, um, we've been wedding photographers since we graduated college. So um, we, uh, when I wasn't doing weddings or working at the barn, I was also um, photographing a lot of fashion bloggers um, because in LA, every other girl is a fashion blogger. And so uh, I was doing a lot of fashion photography and I always thought in the back of my mind, I'm like, I, I feel like I could do that, too. Like, it, mm-hmm. it doesn't seem that difficult and be kind of fun getting all these mm-hmm. free clothes and all that. So um, <laughs> when we lived in when we were moving to Florida and I was in riding clothes every day, um, I enjoyed and, and, and people would comment like, oh, you always put like cute riding outfits together. And um, so one day I remember like looking on Instagram and saying, like, is there such thing as like a fashion blogger, but for horse riders <laughs> so I looked it up and I think there were maybe like two or three at the time that were like active and um I was like this is might be weird and might be like totally a flop but I feel like I want to do be like an influencer in the equestrian world and at that time there weren't hardly any like big equestrian accounts at all let alone like fashion specific so, and this was only like two and a half three years ago mm-hmm. so um I decided to start my equestrian style and I literally, I didn't buy any clothes or do anything. I had Uh um, Ethan photograph me at the barn I was currently working at um, just in like 
five different looks I put together of clothes I already had um, just to get content and then um, started asking a bunch of brands to start mm. collaborating and that's kind of wow. how I started my equestrian style. So, wow. Yeah. It was <laughs> that's exciting. Wow. It just all pulled together with everything that you had done prior to. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what yeah, are some yeah, of it, your, like, must-have clo clothing items that you feel like equestrians should always have on hand? Ooh, like brand-specific <laughs> or just um, just items, in general. Like in general? Yeah. In general, yeah. Um, let's see. Um, I love, so I used to not, I, I'm a very classic equestrian when it comes to apparel, so I was very hesitant about riding leggings, um, the like newer fad of wearing riding leggings yes. for exercise riding. And so I was like, I never wanted to try them. Like they just didn't seem like they would be like secure, comfortable, yeah. and they're not the, you know, the classic look. Um, but a couple brands had sent me some. And so I was like, what the heck, I'll give it a try. And now it's like all I practice in at home. Really? I love them. <laughs> um, and I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm a big gym rat. And so I, I love that I can go to the gym, work out in my riding leggings, and then go ride a few horses after. So it works really well with my lifestyle. So mm. if you have not tried a pair of riding leggings, I would suggest getting some. And the price point's nice. It's not like investing in a full pair of riding breeches. Okay. So um, for at home, I really like, that's like one of my favorite things. Um, another thing, um, I'm a big hat person. Um so I'm usually either, my girls make fun of me uh, with how many hats that I own, but um, I'm either wearing a, a big hat or um, at least some type of visor or whatever, um, and uh, really big into sun protection. And I think I kind of got into that more in California because everyone was really like, everyone wore visors on their helmets and like okay. all of their quarter zip shirts, shirts zipped all the way up with like wow. SPF 100 because it <laughs> would get so hot. Okay. And so I, I kind of carried that over to Florida, um, where I feel like people are a little less, um, like, stingent on right. sun protection. But um, I try to protect my face as much as possible, like being in the Florida sun. So I have lots of hats, so big fan of hats, big fan of riding leggings. And those are probably my two main things that I really like, yeah, that I'm always wearing. Okay. What do you feel are, like, some pieces? If you're, like, just starting out and you're trying to build your equestrian wardrobe, what are some pieces that you feel like you should really invest in and what are some pieces that you can buy that aren't that expensive that you can get away with until you can buy nicer pieces? Sure. Yeah. Um, so I would say as far as apparel goes, um, to, if you're just starting out to not, uh, not fall into the trap of like trying to buy the top brands or you know, what everyone else is wearing. Um, there's there's so many equestrian brands out there now that you can, they're, they're kind of starting to come out with some brands that are a little bit more realistic as far as price point goes. Yeah. But um, I would just try to find um, either retailers or um, brands that have uh, reviews or um, yeah, definitely uh, looking at influencers' blogs when, uh, like, one of us reviews product um, to kind of go that route instead of, like, seeing what all, like, the top riders are wearing and things like that because then you get stuck in a trap of buying $400 breeches and, you know, doing that. Yes. And um, so I would say from the start, there's plenty of retailers that have lower – line of of uh, breeches and riding tops but I mean honestly for for the start if you, you if you're just seeing if you want to get into this whole riding endeavor you can definitely get away with um, wearing leggings or skinny jeans or you know something that you already even have um, make sure you love it and make sure you you know find what's comfortable and then kind of go from there so um, I know that that Dover has some a uh, good you know, lower mm -hmm. price, price options. Mm -hmm. Um, again, the riding leggings are, are cheaper than breeches. Um, so that's always a good, a good way to go. Um, and then, uh, tops are more of a preference. It seems like 
um, it kind of goes like barn by barn. Um, some barns, like it seems like what a, what a couple girls wear, <laughs> everyone wears. Yes. So um, <laughs> some people, uh, I know the the show barn that uh, that I'm a part of and and my clients are a part of. Um, everyone has to wear a collar at all times. So no t-shirts, no tank tops, no no long sleeve shirts without a collar. So um, the all, any of the quarter zip um, riding tops are great. I know everyone wears tailored sportsmen, but there's also a lot of other um, quarter zip long sleeve shirts out there that are um, really nice and a good price point and that you can uh, wear to do other activities or go to the gym or golf or, you know, do anything out in the sun. So um, there are a lot of different options and something that I always recommend to people who are looking for lower priced options is to not just uh, or maybe kind of widen your focus as far as um, not having to look at just equestrian brands. Um, there are plenty of um, kind of like athleisure or active brands. Um, you can find stuff at Target or um, at uh, Forever 21 or, you know, different, sure. different lower um, priced yes. uh places that have quarter zip shirts and that have leggings or have sports bras or things like that, that as soon as it's an equestrian item, it's mm -hmm. premium and gets marked up like crazy. Right. So um, if you can, if you won't take the time and the effort to uh, broaden your search, you'd be surprised with what you can find. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you recently had a collaboration with Tucker Tweed. Could you tell us a little bit about, um, mm -hmm what that was and like how you were invited to do that yeah so um jill tweedy and i have worked together um probably pretty early on and um i have one of my favorite things about my equestrian style is all of the relationships that i've made within the equestrian industry and um it was such a great way because as a young professional um, jumping into, I, I went from being a young professional as a private trainer for my uh, the Swanee family, which is the family I work for now, um, to uh, I, I'm their home trainer. And yes. we then go with their show trainers to the different shows. And their show, their show barn is New Hope Farm out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Mm -hmm. okay. And they are arguably the top hunter barn you know out there they're incredible they have such a good program mm -hmm. all of their horses are fabulous and it's it's such a fantastic program that I'm really really fortunate to be a part of and kind of see the ins and outs of how they do things and so um it was it was definitely um kind of like a it, it's it's kind of a uh, hard situation to be in being a young professional and you're in this the high caliber area of within the discipline and like not knowing a soul because I you know I was from the Midwest uh -huh. hadn't shown this level um, and so I didn't have a ton of connections but my equestrian style and the podcast have given me the ability to make a ton of connections you know in in kind of another way that's still in the equestrian industry so um i had started working with jill just from um i guess other collaborations we met over instagram so love tucker tweed love all of her products and we had done a couple collaborations in the past and um she was do she wanted to do like an influencer um kind of like special project and so we had talked a little bit about what that could look like and so um had a couple other influencers um hop on the bandwagon and um got to design something really cool um those uh, little wristlets um which i love the wristlet anyway and it's so funny because my colors that i selected were mm -hmm. like a like a peach and a coral which is Ooh. I, I love pink Pretty. and I, I like that's definitely one of my colors for my equestrian style but if you ever see me I am almost always in like, like all black or white <laughs> or gray or like anything neutral so it was so funny that I ended up going with something so bright mm -hmm. and I was out of the other uh four influencers my like all they all picked neutral colors and mine was like pow but I wanted something fun for spring and um so we um, each influencer got to pick out colors of the wallet and then um she uh did kind of like a limited edition for all those pieces so it was really nice. fun to so be a part of nice. um and yeah just just kind of through connections from the blog so. nice 
that connection of that classical style, like you say, you like the classic look, so to speak, but then that mm -hmm. pow of color, it just makes yeah, me think yeah. of you when you say that. So yeah, very, very That's neat nice. idea. So one of our listeners wanted to know, um, if you have to go to dinner right after being at the barn, what is something that you can wear <laughs> that will cross over easily? To dinner. <laughs> she she knows you'll smell a little bit like horse, but sure. sometimes yeah. sometimes you have or to. Some perfume. Um, yeah. I, if I, and, and I, yeah, I'm very busy and I usually am the kind of person that tries to pack as much into a day as possible. So at any given time, I have like a big tote of stuff. <laughs> and so something I always have, yeah, perfume for sure. I always have dry <laughs> shampoo. Um, mm -hmm. cause after being like sweaty in a helmet and you don't have time to go home and shower, dry shampoo is the best. Um, so always have that. Um, there are some amazing brands out there that are really, really, um, have an eye for like equestrian apparel that crosses over into street style. Um, off the top of my head, um, I think of free rain and Caliday. I think their breeches, um, can pretty much pass for like trousers or leggings. Um, so, uh, I will sometimes like wear those and then um, there are, I mean, there's plenty of, there's really cute like bomber jackets and um, so I'll usually either wear a riding top. I mean, honestly, there's, I definitely own some riding tops that I could wear um, to dinner afterwards, but in Florida, I'm usually sweaty. So <laughs> I, I usually, I can usually uh, wear like breeches and then I like to wear it with either like a um, like a, just like an easy t-shirt or tank top mm -hmm. with a bomber jacket on top and, uh, wear it with some, um, I don't know if you guys have heard of Catherine Page. She has amazing, um, equestrian inspired sandals and ballet flats okay. wow. and it has, um, their leather and then, um, they mm -hmm. have the like uh, fancy bridal stitching on them. So they're oh. so pretty. I, wow, I am obsessed yeah. with them. Um, and so I, always kind of have those in my bag, um, to go out. And nice. I always, I love to, no matter what I'm doing, have little touches of equestrian, um, kind of essence and like always wear That's my it. Hattie Banks necklace, which is oh, like a little horseshoe, uh, which I love. And, um, just, I love having little staple pieces like that, that mm -hmm. are a little bit more of an investment, but stuff that I can wear all the time wear the crap out of shower and ride in and they, it, you know, it holds up its value. So I would say investing in a couple small pieces that are, um, equestrian specific that you can pair with your, your other clothes to, you know, go out to dinner or quick change into, um, that's usually what I do. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about your podcast. You All launched right. it in January, right? And, yeah. um, so let's talk a little bit about like what your goal was for the podcast, how you even came up with the idea of doing a podcast and um, like what what you're doing with it now. Yeah. Um, so started the Equestrian podcast yeah January and I guess the whole idea of the podcast is the more connections I was making and the more um, actions I was having. I was noticing kind of a gap in the industry as far as um, a space where people could talk about areas of the industry that they are passionate about, that they mm -hmm. don't feel like are talked enough about mm -hmm. in the equestrian world. So um, I wanted to try to create something where we could get top riders and top trainers and people in, you know, more obscure areas of the industry, like, um, farriers or judges or course designers or, um, things like that. And, um, I'm, I'm constantly getting, um, messages on Instagram asking about, um, I, I'm not rider a trainer but how can I work in the equestrian world and what can I, I feel like those are the only two jobs I can get when in reality there's you know thousands of different avenues that you could go in in the equestrian world and right. um I think just recently it's uh become more apparent to people um of all the different areas and so um was trying to find um a space where um I could 
talk to people like that and um, people that are higher up in the industry talk about how they got to where they are today and then what areas of the industry that they're passionate about that they feel like um, the industry needs to shed some more light on. So decided to go the podcast route. And at the time, um, there were like, there were a handful of equestrian podcasts, but I think, um, I think there, there weren't, uh, that many, or there weren't, there weren't, there wasn't another podcast that was kind of doing something similar to what I wanted to do. So decided to do it for myself. And, um, just w- from the connections that I had with the blog was able to, um, find some really fun guests to kick off the um, podcast with and wanted to keep it, um, open to all disciplines and all levels. And so, um, tried to get a wide variety of, um, top riders in every area of the industry and trainers and, um, some, uh, people in the fashion space. And so I've had a ton of fun with it. I was honestly shocked with the success of it and how many people were actually interested in what we had to say. So that was really fun and a a pleasant surprise. So, um, taking a break for the summer, we've done two series. We've done, um, equestrian entrepreneurs, and we've also, um, done one more specific to horse shows. And so taking a little break and then um, we are kicking off with a mind, body, and soul equestrian. So talking about um, nutrition and mental health and physical health and fitness for both horse and rider. So talking to a lot of um, really cool guests uh, for that. And so, yeah, excited to um, to start again in September in the fall. Yeah, that's exciting. It's We're such a faceted group of people. And I think even the equestrians, when they hear others speak about it, they just don't have an idea sometimes of all the different, you know, areas that we all reach out to. So that's that's sure. very interesting. Good for yeah. you. So what's Thanks. next for you? Oh man, um, <laughs> what is next? There is all, at any given time, I have like four big ideas on my desk. <laughs> so <laughs> it's it's all about trying to. Uh, you know, find the, what, what the next step is and what makes the most sense, um, for what I'm doing. But practically speaking right now, just trying to keep my head above water and, uh, get through all these horse shows this summer. We were, I was on the road for three weeks with the girls, um, and, and New Hope. We were in Lake Placid for two weeks and then we went directly from Lake Placid, New York to Devon, Pennsylvania for junior hunter finals. Mm -hmm. And then um, back and forth to Kentucky and um, get, I guess, you have a little bit of break before indoors. And so uh, this is kind of a busier time right now. And so doing a lot of the practical end of my job, which is always fun. Um, And then while I'm home, I am uh, working on a few projects where I've had... um, a lookbook that I've launched every uh, Black Friday. Um, so I guess for the last two years. So um, st- I can't believe we're already starting to think about Black Friday. But I know here we are. are. I know so, we are. Um, <laughs> yes, we are. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. So going to launch another um, online magazine that I put together from start to finish. So it's it's something that needs to be started now. So um, work with a bunch of brands and um, put some uh, looks together for people to be able to shop. Uh, for Black Friday, and they always include every um, brand is super generous and always includes exclusive like Black Friday deals for um, people who read the magazine. So that's nice. really fun. Mm-hmm. So um, gearing up for that, and then um, also um, about to start a new program um, because I get so many uh, messages and emails asking for styling advice and help and people Mm -hmm. just saying, if I give you a budget, can you put Uh, like some outfits together for me or tell me where to shop or tell me how I can put this pair of breeches with these pairs of tops. And so I'm just launching, um, next month I'll be launching a, a a personal styling service where we can, um, do this, where we can talk on the phone or, um, FaceTime or Skype. Um, they'll take a little quiz online to go through their budget and their style and what they're looking and then uh, then put some looks together so going to be doing a little bit of styling as well cool all right well we're going to take a short break and we when we come back we will enter our next segment canter banter do you love horses and live the equestrian lifestyle be sure to check out our brand new blog at www.yourhorsefarm.com we publish three posts per week and feature a free printable equine checklist every month 
Yourhorsefarm.com is a great equine online resource, so be sure to share with all the horse lovers in your life. And remember, laugh much and ride often. Our next segment, Cancer Banter, is brought to you by Ram Horse Fencing and Stalls, the one-stop shop for your horse farm. Ram is family-owned and operated and has been in business for over 30 years. We welcome you to call in and speak with an expert about your next project today at 866-653-8984. Again, that's 866-653-8984. And we're back. Um, Today we're going to talk about um, the kids that you train in your barn can you talk a little bit about like what they do, where they show, and then you have some funny stories for us. Yes, definitely. Okay, <laughs> so I am lucky enough to be a private trainer for the Swanee family. Um, they are a family that moved from Manhattan uh, to Jacksonville, Florida, uh, right about the time that I moved to Florida. And um, so there are two girls, Raina Swanee, who is 13, but she her show age is 12, and then Isha Swanee, who is 16, and her show age is 15. So Isha is, um, she is in the 3-6 Junior Hunters, and so she has um, a few in the small Junior Hunters and a few in the large Junior Hunters. Um, she is really really funny I have she's <laughs> she's super laid back um I make her work and she hates me for it but it's okay <laughs> and uh she is she is always hilarious um she was um able to we were at WEF this winter and she um qualified for the big night class during world hunter week wow. um she was one of the youngest riders and wow. of course like all the big hunter derby professionals uh, that she showed against um, with her little, um, small junior horse bond, who's Sweet. like famous now Sweet. because he's the most adorable Aww. thing ever. Aww. Um, <laughs> and cute little dapple gray horse with Aww. a cute little pink nose. And, um, they, he, it just like is a young six. We literally walked him down to the showgrounds, like without any prep and, um, had never the second, he got through the first trip, she got an 82. We didn't know if it'd make the cut, but she got through the cut to wow. do the second round. Um, the second round included a bounce, which he had never jumped a bounce before. Mm. Um, and so, uh, wow. he was perfect wow. and they ended up wow. 12th overall in the night class That's and so like, so cute. stuff like that is just like so funny that we were just like you're not good. like we didn't even think she was gonna ride in the night class right. and like qualify for it and then here we are doing like the wow. second trip and like yeah that's so, so that, that was a very very stressful but rewarding fun. evening but that's Isha um she's the older and then um the younger sister is Raina Swanee who is probably one of the most um intelligent and competitive kids I have ever worked <laughs> with um she is 13 actually 13 going on 30 yeah and um (laughs) she is she's the kid where she has like 20 people riding her division and at any given time she knows how many points everyone has if she gets second in this class or third in this class if that'll make her reserve or champion tomorrow like she is like brilliant (laughs) yeah she has the numbers down So so she is yeah, and she is on it. She is always, she's like very, um, her lessons are super um, mm-hmm. fun because she is constantly asking questions and if I do uh, this, if I do that, like how will that affect this? And she's definitely a thinker. And yeah. so this the two sisters are very different, um, but they're, yeah, both a blast. And so Raina is Sweet. in the three foot three juniors and um, she has her horse um, most likely that she shows in that division and um, they've done really well. So, um, mm. but yeah, that with that dynamic, there's definitely, <laughs> a slew of fun Got stories <laughs> um we ha- I mean I work with them almost every day and uh I'm home and just practice horses their sh- horses pop back and forth a little bit to Jacksonville but primarily they're with Dave and Chris um with New Hope and uh you know at the horse shows or prepping for that so okay. we usually ride the practice horses and then meet um New Hope down at the shows or wherever they are so um but we've had some funny situations where well both girls <laughs> wear um uh a inflatable vest so yes. it just looks like a black vest yes. it's clipped to their saddle and if they fall off it 
it inflates and so it helps protect their spine and back and stuff so um we've had lots of like funny inflatable you know situations where (laughs) um like a horse will jump them loose and they won't fall off but they'll be far (laughs) enough off the saddle that it'll inflate and so it pops and scares the horse but they're still on like flopping around up there (laughs) looking like a black marshmallow (laughs) like it's a mess but um that's that's definitely always you know part of Part of our situation in Jacksonville. Um, we've it. had we've had so many funny spills. Cute. We've had like um, just random things happen. Like a horse, she, oh, uh, Reina was cantering across the diagonal, had a perfect lead change in the corner. The horse, for some reason, decided to trip and completely fall down. Wow. And she, yeah, which yeah, I guess is not that funny. He, he's, he <laughs> but... was totally fine. Everything was totally fine. I don't even think her vest in deflated or I guess deflated? went off because uh-huh. um, then she like went all the way down and then he popped back up and it yeah so still to this and day she stayed on? I was I happened to be videoing because I was videoing the course for her to look back on and, and oh. see how she can improve and so it's it's on video until he drops down and I'm like oh <laughs> gosh and like I drop the phone and like run so yeah it's it, that that was that's still a mystery um but but we also had one time um, we had a pony and it was our last pony um, because now the girls are too tall. Um, uh-huh. And I don't know if she had something wrong with her eyesight or what, but um, I was breaking down a course um, to just have them jump poles on the ground but there were still standards on the sides Mm because I was still breaking down the course Mm -hmm. and so it was a diagonal line with a pole and two standards and then it was just it ended up just being a single but I still had two standards at the other end of the ring where the end of the line should be and (laughs) she like fully jumped jumped over imaginary (laughs) jump (laughs) it was like a three six vertical and um, obviously Raina was not expecting that (laughs) and um she's on this large pony and she's already a tall kid but for some she was like so panicked and uh the horse had jumped and just like halted because I think she was in shock too and um she's like on her neck sliding up and she's like Bethany Bethany help (laughs) and um she didn't realize that she was like you know like inches from the ground so I'm like just just get up like touch the ground so that's like that's that's normally what what goes on um there in Jacksonville it's it's a a lot of fun that's try to keep it fun because they have a very rigorous show schedule where they're almost always traveling and going to shows um uh, yeah a lot I mean all of Wellington most of the summer only really have a few weeks off in April and a few weeks off in September. Mm, so wow. it's a, yeah, it's a, I give them yeah. so much credit because they still go to school. They aren't even homeschooled and they go to a really, um, a, a, probably one of the top schools in Jacksonville have Ivy league aspirations right. and they're very um, dedicated. So wow. give wow. them a lot of props, try to have a little bit of fun when wow. we're <laughs> at home in Jacksonville. Wow. So yeah. those Ambitious. are just some, some fun stories. Yeah. Um, the only other thing I can think of is I, I kind of have, uh, currently have a, a little stalker situation <laughs> 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 okay. without getting, um, like myself uh, in like risk of being oh. abducted or something. <laughs> I have a situation where um, I had a girl reach out to me who said she wanted um, some training. She had been following me for a long time. It seemed like uh, we, we played some phone tag and finally talked on the phone. She seemed totally normal. She was like my age. We really hit it off. She was saying that uh, she wanted some training in Wellington. I explained that I was four hours north. But, I, but I'm down there all winter. And she said, well, you know, my parents have a plane. Oh. And we have to shuttle you down in during the week. And I'm like, you know, trying to keep my cool, but thinking like, this is ideal. Like, this is so <laughs> cool. It's so exciting. And um, 
everything seemed to line up and it, like everything, you know, she's like, I still want you to work with your private family and we can, you know, make it work. So you do both. I'm like, this is awesome. This is awesome. Got off the phone, talked a little bit, um, via text. And she was, uh, telling me, you know, like random things like she hadn't shown for a while. So she wanted to like upgrade her helmet and get some tall boots and was asking for advice. And I'm like, cool, cool, cool. I was like, when you can send me a picture of your barn in Wellington, and um, so she was like, oh, I don't have any pictures yet, but my friend went, uh, my friend Trill rode her horse over to our arena, and I got to hop on uh, on this horse, and so I took a picture. And so she sent me the picture, and I look at it, and I'm like, okay, that's really pretty. And then I'm like, hold on, and I look at it again. It's my picture. What? <laughs> <laughs> she... she I don't know if like a long time ago or what she literally like looked on my like Instagram account, found a picture that I had just taken of like my horse's ears in the arena in Jacksonville, like a, a normal picture that I take a lot screen, like must have screenshot it, cropped it, sent me the picture. But I'm like, how wow. stupid can you be? Like, it's <laughs> my, like you could have gone on Pinterest. You could have gone on someone else's account. You sent me my own photo. Wow. And so I had to try to navigate and I wanted to still stay professional because I didn't know what the situation was. And I was like, you know, we had a great chat. Thanks for, thanks for chatting. Um, but I, I don't know if you sent it by mistake, but this is yeah. actually my photo. Right. And so she made some, she like changed the subject, made some weird excuse. Um, to this day, she keeps trying to get me to she really wants to meet me in person down in Wellington. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's been a lot of other sketchy instances where I've been having to backpedal a little bit yeah. and yeah. That kind of end communication. Yeah. But I was like, right. that picture wow. just like, <laughs> that wow. was, that was, <laughs> <laughs> wow. So that's my life now. Wow. That's goodness. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, that would be different. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to talk to us. Yes. Um, of course. Thank you so, so much cute. for having me. Yeah. <laughs> we enjoyed, or we hope you enjoyed listening to our podcast and encourage you to share with all your equestrian family and friends. You can tune into the Late Night Riders podcast show every Friday night. Each episode will be uploaded exclusively on YouTube where you can subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with all of our latest shows. Do you have a topic you'd like to discuss? We want to hear from you. You may email us at podcast at ramfence.com or feel free to leave a comment below. Thank you again for listening. Thank you, Bethany. Bethany, it was so nice to talk to you and meet you. Thank you. This was you wonderful. Guys too. Thank it was you. great. Thank you.